You know what I could really use your help on, Pooh? What? I left my axe in the Southern Towerfall Castle. <laughs> the three axeteers. As, as you guys are having this conversation, Wilder comes up on you guys again. He goes, uh, well, you remember how I had um, an encounter with the ex last night? I uh, yes. Well, apparently she introduced herself to LL in the same way. Well, that's not good. I might have a way to protect your house from her. I thought you took care of her by sending her back to the abyss. I did, and she can't physically come to this plane, but that she's a powerful creature, that doesn't mean that she still can't find a way to communicate. However, I could make your home hallowed ground. At least, the catch is it's really expensive. Don't advertising firms use you guys too? You had to carry copy from one place to another. <sighs> you know, I, I... Okay, this is the fastest way out of this conversation. Okay, here's what I want to say, and you can phrase it however you want. You can use some of, like, that that uh, cool, you know, young lingo, so it sounds hip and all that. The king and queen who were bad and evil and were attacking and doing bad things and killing people, they're gone. Orbach and his friends are the reasons why. Do you guys deliver to Drow too? If you do, then tell them that we will let them leave in peace. Um, but if they do not, then we will all rise up against them and we will take back Tower They're not welcome to stay on, under any circumstances. Got it. Well, they have another home under the ground. Okay. I think they like living under the ground. I think that's where they really want to be. I don't think they want to be up here. Okay, I think I've got it. And he flaps off. A few minutes later, Orbog and friends have overthrown the government. Drow must leave. They're happier underground anyway. You guys are heading towards... uh, Castle Manligar, then? Why not? Yeah. You open the kitchen door, and you you find one solitary item <gasps> laying in the middle of the kitchen. Oh, boy, oh, boy. As you pick it up, you see it, and it's a human finger that has a ring on it. Oh, um. That has a ring that looks like a spider. like Wilder's finger. Am, am I correct in assuming that this is Wilder's finger? Um, yeah, that definitely looks like my finger. Oh, Wilder! I didn't know you came with us! <laughs> Wilder's still with us? <laughs> yeah, he met up with you in the, he met up with you guys outside, remember? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know he came. He was talking about LL. Right. And yeah, we just kind of walked off. We didn't... <laughs> I didn't assume he'd come with us. Wilder, you're getting better at that sneaky thing. <laughs> Wilder was so sneaky, he surprised us all. <laughs> we all jump. Well, I didn't even see you there. Um, okay, you, let's... You want your finger back? It has that pretty expensive um, looking ring on it. Not with that ring on it, no. Can I have it? The ring? I don't think anyone should have that ring. Stumblefoot, is there anything we can do to it or we should do? Like burn it or something? Um, the ring? Yes. I, I don't know. Um, maybe cast it into the fire from whence it came? Oh, yeah, well, there was some Mordor in the door back there. We can... Mordor? One does not simply walk into more doors. <laughs> so I'm thinking, um, 
you know, just us guys, we go out and hit the town. No, um, I, I think, I think, uh, we hit Wilder's house on the way to the castle. I'm given the way this castle. What are we going to do at Wilder's house? Make it hallowed ground. Okay. Protect well, his daughter. If we're going to do that, then I need a lot of things that are. Um, well, go to cheap. the treasury. Go to the treasury. <laughs> Which treasury? Because the one in this castle. <laughs> I'm I'm we- sure we can we can rob some. I mean, we can get something other things on the way. Could we visit a pizza shop? Ooh, pizza. Why? Well, you you said you needed herbs and, and spices and oil. Right. Right. Wouldn't but they? we're probably gonna need to buy them. And I don't know about you, but um, I'm about 960 gold short of buying everything that we need. I don't really keep yeah. track of money that well. If we're being honest, I bought a bowl. You bought a broken bowl. It's art. It's something. Well, it's a very pricey bowl. Okay, well... I'm assuming Orbog would have some sort of idea of where we could go to get these things. Some of the things that he mentioned. If only somebody knew about a magic shop that you had an address and a secret password to get in. I was told we shouldn't go there. You know, I just had a brilliant idea. Go ahead, say it. What if there was a magic shop that we had an address for and a secret code to get in? Are you thinking that's a good idea all of a sudden? I never thought it was a bad idea. But I really, I really don't have any reason to go there. Yeah, yeah, but you thought Dr. Nix was a good idea, too. Wilder... I'll show Wilder the card, because Wilder's also from here. Wilder, do you know what this place is? Uh, yeah. That, uh... That place... I My buddy actually runs that place. It, um... They sell magic stuff. Like, the, 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 like the primo magic stuff. Right. Okay, well... I mean... We could go there, um... The problem is, in order to make your home hallowed ground, which I'm willing to spend the time to do, I need herbs, oils, and incense that are worth a thousand gold pieces, which I don't have. They think outside the box, so... Okay. I mean, they might have other solutions there like that bowls. don't require that. Then let's go talk to your friend. Maybe he can help us out. Well, I'm up for that. We're off to see the wizard, the wonderful wizard of... All right, we go to there, wherever there is. <laughs> there. Uh, you go to the address on that card. Which um, is? What about witches? Oh, which? Then I was just wondering what the address was. Uh, it's uh, 123 South MacGuffin Lane. Ah, uh, there we go. That's the one. Uh... Uh, and there's a sign on the door that says Beatles and James. Well, this can't okay. be the place. It doesn't say what the card says. Are you sure this is the right place? We're supposed to say. And there, there's kind of there's kind of a eye slot on the door uh, that looks like it would slide open should you knock. Yeah. I will knock three times. All right, so you you knock three times and the slide opens and you just see a set of eyes staring at you. I'll look at him and say, Creech! The slide closes. You hear some locks on the door. What'd you just call me? Up. I was using the password. Creech? And Krong. Like the sound a door makes when it opens? Creech! Sure. That's the word. And I'll walk inside. Uh, as you walk inside, because the when you when the door opens, all you see is black. Okay. You, you, there's like literally like you can't see inside the door. I'm gonna trust it and just walk through. I walk into. I'm going in and hope I don't just suddenly find a flight of stairs and tumble down it to my death. I am. I shall step into the darkness and bring the light. 
Okay. So the four of you step into the darkness. You get a momentary feeling of weightlessness and breathlessness. And then you come out and it, it, it's kind of like a, uh, it's kind of like a seedier version of the Sage's Portal inside here. Uh, and, and you see various people wearing hooded robes walking around in here, making for certain that nobody can see their face as they're in here. Uh, hello! There. Yeah. You? Uh. There is there is one person behind the counter. Uh, he's kind. He looks like a sort of like a uh, lizard man. A lizard. Yeah, man. sort of like lizard folk. Yep. I walk up to him and say, oh, "We're here for some grass and oils, right?" Right. I'm gonna ask to see their um, forbidden section. Uh, he kind of raises an eyebrow and he looks over at Wilder, and uh, he looks back at you. Are them? Are they? Are you with them? And Wilder just kind of nods and gestures, makes a few gestures with his hands. Well, not that gesture. Um, do uh, any of you understand thieves can't? Uh, who can understand any spoken language now? But I'm it's not, not a spoken, spoken language. I'm assuming it's, it's not. It's, a it's gestures. Yeah. Uh, no. Nope. Uh, he just makes a few gestures, and the guy behind the, je- the counter gestures back, and he goes, "All right then. All right then. Uh, right this way." All righty. Thank you very much. And he goes up to a book. He goes up to a bookshelf, and he pulls some books forward and slides a few to the side and pushes another one uh, kind of in a little bit and then after a few sequences like that uh, the bookshelf slides down into the floor I wasn't expecting that and uh, he he leads you through and he, he walks through another doorway that is filled with blackness you walk uh, in through this uh and you again you get another feeling of weightlessness and breathlessness as you go through this doorway um, and when you come when you come out of the doorway you are looking around and it, it looks like a spell library in here and there's sections of schools of magic that you know are forbidden like necromancy and, and, and things of that nature. But uh, anybody who's familiar with magic, which I'm going to assume is probably uh, just Stumblefoot and Wilder, uh, you guys see a, a row of books and scrolls that are labeled as a school of magic that you aren't familiar with called Execration. Execration? I never heard of that. Wilder's well, like, yeah, I. I've uh, never been super curious to look back here. And the lizard man looks as it. It's an especially uh, forbidden school of magic. Uh, celestials and demons both don't... Uh, they choose not to talk about it. Why is that? There's a certain level of finality to certain levels of the magic depending on the sacrifice that the caster is willing to yield. Okay. Oh, that sounds dangerous. Hey. We'll take two. <laughs> no, I don't think we will. It's when it's it's what you turn to when you want to guarantee something gets done. You're not entirely caring about your own well-being to take care of it. Like, for instance, if you wanted to destroy uh... Loth? Well, I mean, if if you wanted to go that route, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could destroy Loth, uh, but that's big. That's big magic, mate. Uh... He'd, uh... Essentially, whoever's casting it 
how execration works is whatever you cast is also cast upon yourself. It's sort of like an arrow that shoots both directions. We'll take three. Right? Uh, no. Oh. Okay. What he's saying, Poo, is that if you wanted to destroy Loth and you cast a spell on her using this kind of magic that would destroy her, it would also destroy you. Oh, well, that's not quite as good as what I thought it was. Ray, it, it's sort of a... Uh, at that at that point, you kind of become a one-trick pony, if you will. Can, can you, like, do the opposite and, like, say I wanted to make uh, my friend here, Stumblefoot, like, really awesome? Would I be really awesome, too? He looks at you, and he, go, and he just kind of chuckles to himself. And he goes, <laughs> "There are some things that magic can't do, mate." <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> Sick bird. Oh, kind of burned us both. So it's I like know. the spell. You sent out something, and you got it back. Hey, it's sort of a I'm rubber and you're glue situation. Yeah, I kind of feel like that was the Haru message that's worked kind of like Yeah, I got that message. Uh, So, that was weird, right? I mean, we're just... Right. Yeah, they're they're mixed up. I mean, they want like fifteen dollars an hour. I mean, how much do you make here? Fifteen dollars an hour. (laughs) No, the how do you want fifteen gold an hour? Ah, they're all greedy children. Yeah, most how do's are. That's what I was saying. Anyway, we'll. uh, What I'm looking for is, uh, I need to. I need to create some hallowed ground. Whichever way I can do that. Hallowed ground, then. I um. It needs herbs with an H. Well, I mean, we specialize in the particular. I don't. Maybe the not so forbidden section. We're not your typical magic shop. Uh. I'll, I'll put you like this. Uh. The things we dabble in would be a little bit uh, contradictory to well contradictory to what would be considered as uh, uh, holy magic or radiant magic okay I understand um, let's approach this from a different perspective then Wilder's daughter is um, being communicated to by a particular spidery demon queen mm-hmm and we'd like to knock that crap off. Do you have any tinfoil hats? Oh, so you were, you were, you were being quite literal when you said... Uh, oh, yeah. You wanted to execrate Lolth. Yeah, we know what we're talking about, except for I the bugbear. cast banishment on her yesterday and banished her from this plane. But, you know, she... Oh, good God. Loth's been in Tower 4? Yes. You'd think we were heard about it. Um, well, she was masquerading as Queen Ashlyn. Oh. Uh, that makes a lot of sense, then. It also makes sense why there's so many, uh... Drow around, you know? Yes. Right. Right. So, um, we're trying to, um... Solve that problem and liberate Towerfall, but we're trying to limit her grasp you know, on the area. Mm-hmm. 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 So, um, you know, that's why we're looking for solutions. Uh, we went down to uh, Castle Manlegar, but uh, they cleared that out. And the drow cleared out. The Castle Manlegar doesn't mean anything to me. Uh, but, uh, you know, happy endings on the drow, I suppose. <sighs> How to take care of Lulf? That's quite interesting. I, that, that's gonna be, that's gonna require a certain. Genesequa. What are you willing to sacrifice to take care of love? A finger. I have a bowl. With a ring on it. I mean, 
If it came down to it, I'd sacrifice myself if it had to. That's good. That's good, because you, uh, you might. Uh, now, um, Stumblefoot, I thought we uh, just talked about not using those, those magic spells. Well, sometimes you have to be willing to um, do something for the greater good. And uh, if that's what it takes, I mean, it could be our, it could be our, we could keep it in our back pocket. We don't have to do it. Right. Um, yes, I, I understand doing something for the greater good. And, and that I'm, I'm, I'm all about that. I don't, I don't want to lose another friend, is all I'm saying. We don't really want to do it, but, I mean, if that's what it took, I would. Right. Well, tell you what, I've got an idea. And he runs off into the depths of the execration, the execration section. Uh... He's going to have his fake d- Stumblefoot's death. Into the excrement section? I don't know about this. Uh, it's, oh. That's where you should go. Uh, he comes back and he has a scroll in hand. He he hands it in your direction. And he's got this look on his face. Now, I'm, I'm handing this to you. And... This is the spell that we were we were talking about was when you first came in here. You know, you when you were suggesting, oh, how do we get? How do we kill Loth? How do you destroy Loth? You know. However, he he kind of unravels the scroll a little bit. If you if you look here and it tells you where to use the name of the target. Hmm. What do you know about the soul? Well, I know that the soul is comprised of different components, different pieces. Mm -hmm. I know souls can be stored in soul stones. And they can be lost. Mm -hmm. And I know that souls are eternal. Right. Uh, You do know about the multiple pieces. So you know that the... Identity is part is part of those is is part of that structure. Uh, the the identity is uh, it kind of defines the who of the existence. Some cultures would say that this portion of the soul would be what is referred to as your secret name. Great. Right. Uh, and as I, I can see that you're a man of the cloth. So you are familiar with uh, exorcisms? I I am familiar. And so you know that when you're exorcising something supernatural, uh, if you are if you have that being's name, it uh, gives you power over that entity, right? I. Well, think of think of a being's secret name. As right, you're talking about true names. Right, right. You understand. If you are able to get Loth's secret name, her true name, as you put it, it might give a little bit more oomph to the spell hmm. and require less sacrifice. Interesting. You could possibly destroy Loth's soul without having to destroy your own. Well, that would be better. Um, where does one find a secret name? Is it on, like, a birth certificate or something? Well, your, a secret name or a true name is something that's readily guarded. Um, it, it, it's not something you just want to have out there. My suggestion, I mean, if you're trying to, uh, if, if Loth is your target, I would go after, you know, maybe try to see if you can't get it from, uh, a high priest of Loth. One place we could look is the cathedral in Towerfall. Maybe they have a to- an old tome that has 
names recorded. Ooh, a tome. Well, I think that we have a mission. We could talk to your mentor, maybe. He might have some insight. I don't... Finding a high priestess of Loth, that's going to be... It's going to be tricky. I mean, we haven't seen any in uh, Castle Sterker. It means the only other place to find something like that would be in the Drow City below ground. And we're not trying... We're, we're trying not to go there. Aye. <sighs> I think going there would be a bad idea. Especially since we no longer have a hat of disguise, so, you know, we cannot easily sneak, sneak in. And I'm going to give yes. Orbog just a dead stare. Yes, what what did you do with my hat, anyway? I saved the girls by taking it off. Yeah, yeah but did you put it in your pocket or your backpack or anything? It was a... Listen... It was a grand gesture. You know, you know what was a grand gesture? Was going to Sage's portal and buying it back and giving it to you. That was a grand gesture. You know what was a grand gesture? Selling that hat to save a person's leg. I, Who, I seem, I seem yeah. to remember that you uh, didn't quite sell I, that. I sold it. No, it was definitely, I definitely sold it to save Gareth's leg. We made a, a proper bargain. The other person just didn't know it. <laughs> I I feel like I should insight check Pooh. <laughs> that's, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, that would be an eighteen on my insight check. That is exactly what Pooh. Go did. ahead and oh. roll. Go ahead and roll persuasion or deception, whichever I'm, one I'm not, you're trying to do here. I'm just telling it like it is. <laughs> that's, that's what we did. Um, persuasion? Uh, I, I mean, I'm not trying to deceive anyone. I'm just... Uh, yeah, so that is a seven. Pooh, are you sure that you sold it? That a fair bargain was struck? Well, he wasn't very nice. He was being rather mean. But I I, I gave him the hat, I punched him in the face, and I, I took the diamond. Wait, run that last bit by me again. I, I gave him the hat, I punched him in the face, and I took the diamond. See, that's where I think maybe... You have your concept of what a fair bargain is a wee bit mixed up. Um, the gentleman whom you got the diamond from may not feel it was a fair trade, especially since you punched him in the face. He did call the police. As right he should. Uh, that's assault and potentially theft. All for a good cause. <sighs> yes. Orbog, the Shadow Slayer, supports you, citizen. Thank you. Stumblefoot, uh, double face palms. <laughs> <laughs> so, you wouldn't happen to have any hats around here, would you? We've got all kinds of stuff here, but it's it's not so much the... Uh, you don't have any hats, just any hats? Well, we, we, we've got hats, but we don't have, like, the hats, like, what you're talking about. He doesn't have a hat of disguise. He probably has like a hat of imminent doom or something like that. Sign me up. Not so much that. Um, like you've heard the phrase, keep it under your hat, right? Uh, yes. Uh, follow me. Oh. He takes you back out to the front room again and he grabs a, he grabs kind of like a, a baseball cap. Uh, well, you, you've heard the phrase, keep it under your hat, right? And he takes the hat and he pushes the top down to flip the hat inside out uh-huh. and like a bunch of notes and gold and gems and stuff fall out of the hat oh. it's like it's 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 a hat of storing well that could come in handy well that's much less dark and grim than I was thinking well I mean the forbidden section is the forbidden section but I mean you know this is this is the more socially acceptable, but just not as Unique. 
Yes, unique. Unique's the best way that I could put it. How much are you wanting for this scroll? Oh, that scroll, um... It's a funny thing about that uh, forbidden section. We have it because people want it. So, but in the same sense, it seems a bit rough to, because, I mean, there's implications about the the amount of sacrifice that you're, (sighs) I mean, I suppose I could, part with it for 10 platinum I will take out my pouch of diamond dust and measure out 100 gold worth of it and ask him if that will suffice he's like oh uh, components okay Uh, just second he kind of waves his hand over it and you watch as the diamond dust coalesces into just a diamond something a bit more manageable uh yeah yeah this could this could do nicely all right and i have a bowl i, I take out my broken bowl how much is that looks like five pieces to me five pieces yes i have five pieces right here of bowl i think <laughs> knowing my friend here i think he's expecting you to uh Maybe turn that into a proper bowl. And for that, I'm sorry. Actually, I was just hoping to pay for the hat with my bowl. Uh, no. Uh, we, we, uh... This is not a barter situation. Uh, this is, uh... We will take, uh, gems, or we will take, uh, currency, but, you know... Uh, How much is that, then? What about his nifty arm? No, I just want to know how much the hat is. Uh, the hat is going to be about 50 gold. 50 gold, yes. I, I don't think I have that much on me. If we were, when Pooh was sleeping, able to sell his arm to you. Orbog, no. I'm just thinking out loud. John, what is this scroll that I just bought called? You can just write down scroll of execration. Um, well, there's a very nice hat, but I think all I have is bowl, so I guess I'll have to save up for it, unless you want to make a fair trade. I thought you already had a, another hat. And that one was an evil, well, a misunderstood lady. No, 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 the uh, ten foil I thing. up. To save Imran's brother. I'm hatless. Oh, that's right. <sighs> um, did you just subtly make a intimation of violence in my general direction? Well, it, it was more of a joke, but uh, yes, I suppose you could call it that. But I wouldn't hurt you because you're a nice man who sold us this nice scroll. And I just made a poor choice of words. Hmm. I'll have to ask you to refrain from making such comments in the future. I will talk to myself about that, and hopefully I'll listen. Well, okay, but but if he did, what would you, oh powerful magic person, do to him? He'd turn me into a frog. He, he mutters something and cracks his neck. As he twitches his head off to the left, uh, Pooh, I need you to make why would you, a. Uh, why would you do that to me? Oh, <laughs> I need you to make a wisdom saving throw, please. Okay. Yeah, I can do that. You're welcome. Uh, and I used a key point to re-roll it because I can do that now. So now it's a twenty-eight. Okay, for a brief moment, you feel your body go completely stiff, like you can't <laughs> move it. But then you you find your center. And then it, you, your chi starts to flow through you, and your your muscles relax. And you got a you got a sense that he's kind of a powerful guy himself, and he could have made you freeze up should he so choose. Um, I think as a general rule, we should not threaten violence against anyone who's a shop owner. Like that's just bad manners. I didn't. 
I wasn't. I, yes, I don't right. know. I, uh, I'm sorry, you. He has a <sighs> he has a bad history with shop owners. Dude, it's, why it's is a, it, why is going into shopping places such a trial with you, friend? Because I never have any money. I, I don't think that's a problem. And I have big bugbear feet. Hey, I need to work on your papal skills. His papal skills? <laughs> is, is Pooh starting a religion? <laughs> I said papal skills. <laughs> right, papal skills. I, I cannot help it if you hear me words for my accent wrong. Pooh might get like one of those papal hats. That's a miter. Yeah, that, that's yes. I thought a miter was what you use as a type of saw. You might have mentioned that once or twice. Oh, Steve, we miss you so much. (laughs) Perhaps we should do one of two things. Um, We should look for um, a source of information where we can find a name, or we should uh, do that, um, you know, speech thing. What would you do for an orbog? That's a little jingle I've been working on. We have the 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 tower in between us, so we could probably look in there or try to talk to Ericeth or something like you said. Sounds like a plan. Whether we're going to the Northern Castle or Wilders or whatever. I mean, we didn't find a way to get the things we needed for me to create hallowed ground, so... While that I was thinking that uh, this might be the place to find a way to do that, but looks like that was a bust. But we did find a way to potentially get rid of uh, one of our big problems for good. But that would also get one, rid of one of our little problems. <laughs> yeah, and you kill two birds with one stone. When you get when you get back to uh, Waterdeep and you sort that mess out, then you can run for mayor. Oh, no. I think. Waterdeep is... Uh, Waterdeep's not there anymore. Waterdeep now. Unless we can find a way to fix that problem. Right. You're saying there's no competition. I'm saying there's no place to compete. Okay. And quite honestly, I'm not looking to uh, uh, take up office here. Uh, Not interested. I know. Well... Um, so... What should we do then? Do we just go through and just keep looking places? Should we go back to Tombolg and see if he has anything? Oh, we might need to split up. I mean, I could spend some time doing some research at the cathedral if they'll let me. But we definitely should, um, I think, look at uh, trying to shore up our position here and uh, secure the castle. And the best way to do that would probably be to uh, raise an army. Speech time, baby. Um, oh, let me, I wanted to, to ask Mr. Awesome Magic Man a question. Do you, okay, I am trying to find my wonderful axe, but it was removed from the castle. Is there a spell where I can find out where it is or a spell that will, can bring it to me? Without me being it, I had already having a spell on it. It is a magical axe, well, so I maybe mean, that you could, helps. You could always just cast scry on that and find out where it's at. You scry on an item. You can do that. I can do that now. Yeah, I think yeah, I didn't know he could do that either, but I know Stumblefoot was bragging about that this morning. Oh, don't know I was bragging about it. I was excited about it though. I was going to take some time, and if I do that, then... Uh... <sighs> well, that's all right. Well, how many episodes do you think it would take? It won't take long. It'll take me ten minutes. <laughs> we should go someplace else if we're going to do that. Well, we shouldn't do it here. And it's fine to do that after, or whatever. Right. Well, thank you for your services. I'll be back for that hat. Yes. You're always welcome here at... Uh... Beatles and James, just remember the password. And, uh, Crikey. No. Cheech. No. John. Cheech. Cheech. That's it. We head out. Well, it was 
It was nice meeting you. Goodbye, citizen. Right, let's go. Where are you guys headed? Do you guys want to go to the cathedral first? Or do we want to try and round some folks up? Is uh, Do we see people out and about? Well, I mean, it's just a regular day, so I mean, uh, people are just going about their usual business. You do notice distinctly less drought. I figured that. I wonder if they all fled. Maybe we should just go. Well, I mean, how how could they not flee after the message that Orbog just had us send out? <laughs> let's go to uh, let's go to Castle Sturker. <laughs> Let's go see what's happening up there. All right. We're, I guess we're going to go to Castle Sturker. On our way, I right. hand out pamphlets. <laughs> uh, make a make make a persuasion roll. Okay. Who? 14. I don't know if you want Captain Charisma here managing your campaign. <laughs> uh, Negative you, two, man. So you hand them out and you get a fairly tepid response. People take them. Orbog, get your Orbog here. Uh, so, some people, when they take them, they just put them in the next immediate trash can and they walk by. You notice that too. I pull them out of the trash can and hand them to m- other people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I really gotta come up with that slogan that just sells you, Orbog. Orbog, enough said. When we're walking, I just want to say that message was an accident. Um, so you guys get to Good. Castle Skeletor. There's uh, smoke coming from the windows. A bunch of the windows are busted out. Someone's cooking. Like the castle was lit on fire? Parts of it. <gasps> from the inside or the outside? From the inside. Oh, oh, Bog, is is this how it usually looks? I'm really trying not to say anything bad about the drow right now. Right. Well, Orbog, to be fair, I mean, you did kind of force them out of the city and said they'd like it better underground anyway. That's not exactly what I said. I was... I was misquoted. I don't really think you were. I was standing right there when you said it. Can't just pick and choose little little parts. Well, I I think you were speaking in hyperbole. No, no, I I distinctly remember I did not say it that way. I think you were speaking in hyperbole, but, uh, you know, I think maybe some of it got lost in translation, especially since uh, sending, you know, can only have so many words. Right. Uh, let's check out this castle thing that's on fire. Let's go inside and see how bad it is. You go inside. The place is fairly well ransacked. There's a few rooms that are on fire upstairs. Okay. Um, the rooms that are on fire, can I get close enough to cast create water? I don't see why not. What's the dis- What's the range on that? Uh, the distance is 30 feet. Um, and when I cast it, I create 45 pounds of food and 30 <laughs> gallons of water. <laughs> yes, sir. Who supports this? <laughs> okay. Course of action. How many times can you do this? Uh, three times. You're fortunate because there's three rooms that are on fire. But I'm thinking with 30 yeah. gallons of water, hopefully I can douse the, the flames. When 30 gallons of water just appear and drop from the sky into the room. Right. And you said how much food appears with this? 45 <laughs> pounds of food. Why have you never done this before? <laughs> just created. <laughs> just honey. 135 pounds of food. <laughs> this game is the best game in the world. What what kind of food are you making? I want I want to I, I need this Honey. image in my head right now. <laughs> beef, the beef first one is limahead. It's just forty five pounds of filet mignon. <laughs> All right. So as 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 this water drops onto the fire with uh, with the uh, 
a bunch of filet mignon <laughs> drops with it. And uh, you get some really, uh, you get a lot of steamed steak. Mm, yum, <laughs> steamed steak. Well, then in the next room, it'll be next time. 30 gallons of water and 45 pounds of potatoes, because nothing goes better <laughs> with steak than potatoes. All right, so you got some you got some steamed steak and some steamed potatoes. We You're need getting some a, butter. You got, you, right now, you have a ritzy uh, menu for a heart attack victim. Let's keep going. Butter! 45 pounds of butter! <laughs> <laughs> yes, in room three, it's gonna be butter, and boy, is that gonna get messy really quick. Uh, one second, as this happens, one second. wait a second, <laughs> Josiah. What? Wait a second, <laughs> Eric. You're telling mm-hmm. me that you can create forty-five pounds of food. Well, why didn't you just make it herbs and then your spell? Oh, that's such a good idea. <laughs> Too late. I don't think. I don't think. I, I, I don't think that works though, because it has to be. It has to be herbs, oils, and incense. It's not yeah. like just one thing. It has to be all three. Yeah. Herbs, oils. <laughs> anyway, butter. Incense butter. isn't food, so I can't just be like incense. <laughs> Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> who is scooping up? So, all this are, stuff are, are you? Are you? Are you actually going with the butter for room three? Yes, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, as this drops, the the butter melts as it proceeds as it goes oh, yeah. into this room. I, I'm I'm picking the potatoes from the other room and throwing them in the butter. Uh, throw some of the steaks in there too. And some of the steaks too, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the but there's there's a big old gush of buttery water <laughs> as it flows out of this room. <laughs> um Nope. Uh Stumblefoot, I need you to make a percentile roll for me, please. I need to know if the oils in this butter catch fire again from the hot room. Uh, 66. Okay, no, it's fine. It's just buttery water. Uh, um, uh, Stumblefoot, can I borrow that chest for a moment? Uh, I, yeah. I, I start putting potatoes and flame and yawns and butter and the- yes, all you're uh, doing is dropping that into the the treasury of the other castle <laughs> that's where that box goes <laughs> but who wants to keep some for later <laughs> throwing food from one <laughs> castle to another through this box <laughs> He just knows that he can get the, it later if that if if he does this. Oh, this is delicious! So good. Uh, well, uh, thank you for that. Uh, you're welcome, I guess. Uh, and Pooh is drenched. Better. You all are. You, you guys, <laughs> like your your clothes have started to shrink from all the steam that's in the air right now. <laughs> uh, Stumblefoot, I need you to make a quick history check for me, please. Thirteen. Uh, being back in this castle, you remember a section of conversation that you overheard Lolf say before you banished her. About okay. about guests of honor in the dungeon. Mm-hmm. Um, just the thought that ran through your head. Well, let's go down to the dungeon. When you were down there last, you don't remember seeing anybody actually down there. Right. I thought we looked. You didn't go all the way to the end. You it got dark, and you guys were like, uh, "It's probably fine." There may still be someone down in the dungeon, way far back. 
And they could use some steak. I think they could use some freedom. And steak is freedom. Um, right. All right, I'm Stumblefoot's headed to the dungeon. Yeah. All right. Uh, you head down there, and of course, that spell of silence is still in play down there. Um, you head back towards the that part. You get back towards the uh, one section of the dungeon where you have the four doorways that uh, kind of cross the room from each other. So you have three three different doors you can open, and I'm gonna see if you can remember which door goes where. The I think I think the center door was the torture room, right? Yes, that makes sense. Who has no idea? the 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 torture The torture room is the room that you're currently in. Oh, because um, I remember I opened the left door. I'll open the center door. You see another hallway of uh, cells going further down, and it, but it, it's a it's a much darker corridor than the one you first came down. Right, because the door on the right was the closet. Mm-hmm. The center door was the long corridor, and I forget what the door on the left was. That was the one I opened. I think that also was more cells. Um, let's just go all the way to the end of this one, looking in the cells. Okay, um, you start heading down there, and it seems to be pretty emptied out. And the further and further you go, uh, it, it's getting darker and darker and darker. Uh, who has dark vision? I do. I do. I do. Oh, geez, all three of you do. All three. three every, everyone but Wilder. Yeah, yeah, yeah Wild, Wilder's Wild, here. Wilder's uh, probably has his hand on... Uh, Who's shoulder as you guys make your way My down. My buttery. I have the cantrip. That's, that's not. I have the cantrip light. That's not typically where Wilder touches people. But. I have the cantrip light. I will cast light on a coin and I will hand it to Wilder. Oh, Wilder's like, oh, thanks. And he's kind of holding it up. Uh, so, yeah, you guys make pocket. your way down. And at the two in there are at the two cells at the end of this hallway. On the right, you see a humanoid female um, who is unconscious. And as you look at one hand, it, there are th- about three fingers that look like they've been pulled out of socket. If you look at the other hand, it looks like someone grabbed the pinky and ring finger with one hand and the pointer and middle finger with the other and just started pulling in opposite directions. Nope. And uh, it, her her hand has been opened up all the way down to the wrist. Do we recognize this person? Um, yeah, this is uh, is this Ashlyn. This is the real Ashlyn, correct? Okay. Um, I would like to open her cell door. Okay. Can we open it? Yeah. I mean, if you if you have a key or the means to unlock it. Wilder, can you pick this lock? Wilder has, Wilder has his key of knocking. His knock key. Oh, yeah. Actually, you can't talk. Oh, yeah, it's silent. Okay, I'll look at Wilder, and I'll point at the lock and make a unlocking motion. Uh, Wilder gets out his thieves' tools. This is most thieving Wilder's ever done. I know, right? What's an unlocking motion? I twisted my hand like I'm unlocking a door. Okay. Um, okay. And the cell opens up. All right. I will go into the cell and I will. Um, is Ashlyn conscious? No. Very no. She's hardly breathing. Okay. I am going to do my best to reset her hand and bind the wound okay. together so that when I heal it, it heals properly. Mm-hmm. That'll wake her up. And then I'll cast Cure Wounds and heal it. 
Okay. Uh, for the binding, I'd like you to make a medicine check for me, please. Sure, I can do that. Um, that's an 18. Okay. You do a pretty solid job of binding it up, and then what you heal and the, the wounds begin to re-affix to each other. Um, she doesn't wake up. Um, the thing about cure wounds, as Matt Mercer once said, is it, it'll feel the it'll heal the physical damage, but it doesn't necessarily uh, fix things like malnutrition and dehydration. Understood. Oh, you know what? If silence is cast down here, then I can't cast spells. Oh, really? Yeah, because it negates the verbal component of the spell. Gotcha. That's right. That's right. That's right. So I would have known that. So I would not have cast cure wounds. Right. But I'm sure you probably still would have bound up the hand. Just yes, I will bind up the hand and we'll pick her up. Yeah. Pool, uh, pool you said there's somebody else we saw down here. Yeah. Are you sure you don't want to just shove her through the uh, chest? You know, send her. No. No, who, who comes? Well, she needs. She's hungry. She needs food, right? We can just shove her through the chest, and then she'll have a, yeah. a nice steak meal waiting for her on the other side. That she can't Steaking pick up potatoes. with either of her hands. Who, who is going to start using those? He's going to hand out pamphlets and steaks when he when he talks to people about Orban. <laughs> Greasy steaks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Greasy steamed filet mignon. It says, "No mistake. Ugh. Vote for Oba- Orban." <laughs> <laughs> so who's in the other cell you see the motionless other than he, he looks like he's breathing but outside of that he, he he's catatonic on the floor uh, the uh, body of King Vault yeah if only we had a soul stone you do nope wait oh that's right we got it back but we left it at Tom Bolg's darn it um, I'm going to motion to somebody to pick him up. Yeah, Orbog can pick him up. Can I, can hand, I can hand Ashlyn to someone else and carry Vault. I can probably carry both of them. Let's let's take him back out to an area where we can talk, and then yeah. I'll, I'll cast Cure Wounds on um, Ashlyn and give her some, try and get some water down her throat. Some okay. buttery water. Gross. I have I have normal water in a canteen. Well, a water while you, skin. While you guys are Who is filled dragging with his canteens with the butter water. While you guys are dragging uh, the, them through this dungeon, um, you do encounter that torture room again with the two other doors. If you wanted to check them as well, or keep going. I mean, I can go I down. I was going to say torture them. If, if they want to haul everybody up, Wilder and I can go down the la- the hallway on the, is it the left door? I want to say it's the left door. Okay. And just take a look. We'll open the left door. Okay. You open the left door and you see a red room that's recessed into the ground by about three inches and uh, there's a certain aroma of blood that comes out of this room and you start to see shadows escape oh that's right shut that door (laughs) shut shut that door and we don't open it Um, as soon as the door cracks open I realize oh yeah we shut that door (laughs) we leave that door shut I feel like I was tricked into opening that door I didn't trick you I just didn't remind you what was behind it uh-huh. Yeah, that was convenient. Okay, Mister DM. If it was me, if it was the other way around, you certainly wouldn't have reminded me. No, I would have let all the shadows out. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, you get to the top of the stairs, and you—I'm assuming you cast that uh, healing spell on uh, Ashlyn. Yeah, when he found his voice and, again. And uh, yeah, the hand heals up nicely. Does it? Yes, it does. Uh, what are you guys doing at the top of the stairs, yo? We should take Ashlyn back uh, to Tom Bog. I'm sure uh, Emwyn would uh, appreciate seeing her friend again. I um, do that. 
uh, we should probably take King Vaults back too and decide whether or not we think reuniting him with his soul is a good idea. I mean, ethically, it's a good idea. We should probably, like, chain him up or something before doing that. You know, just in case. Here's some trouble with that. We've just told everyone that we uh, overthrowed the government and now we're going to carry his body through both cities to get back to Tombolgs? Seems like a bad plan. What if we go down to the stables and see if there's a horse and cart and just throw a tarp over him and take him back to Tombolgs? A magical hat would sure come in handy right about now. Right, but doesn't the person wearing it have to think about what they want to look like? And he's not doing a lot of thinking right now since... You know, he's separated from his soul. God, it is. God, it is. It's fine. That's who, what we who do. Who goes into town to see if he can find a cart? You don't want to go to the royal stables? Who goes to the royal... Well, who goes... <laughs> who goes to town to look for a cart? That's what I said. That's what... <laughs> Pooh starts heading that direction. Who starts heading... We have stables... Who we have stay unless they let all the horses go or something. Oh, you have stables. Well, we, let's. Oh, where's the stables? Let's take a look. Yes, we stay unless they let them go. All right. So uh, Orbog leads you towards the uh, stables. Um, uh huh. It's it's a little bit gruesome when you get there. It seems like uh, a lot of the horses were being pieced out, like parted out, um, possibly for consumption oh that's not that's not very nice uh, but you 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 do find you do find a, a couple horses that look like they could pull a cart that haven't been uh, turned into meat yet all right I will name you bud well let's hook them up to a cart and get a move on you are not gonna trick us John we will take the dead horses and we will make it work um, okay I we hook up the horses to a cart. And I named one of them Bud. And I named the other one Tur. Oh, yes, Bud and Tur. Bud Tur. <laughs> sure, <laughs> why not? Get it. <laughs> so yeah, you guys uh, drive this cart through the city. Um, you're heading back to Tombolg. Unbun! Utter! I think Orbog and, and uh, Stumblefoot were wanting to check some things out in the cathedral. Okay. Yeah, um, on our way back through the cathedral, I want to stop and either talk to Ericheth or look for um, some kind of archives where maybe we can look to see if we can find um, a book that's got some true names in it. How do you want to go about doing any of what you just said? I think my library card still works. Are there still priests and whatnot in the cathedral? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's the, the cathedral's open. Um, they uh, there's people milling okay. around. I'm sure there's you could totally find one if you wanted to. Can we roll up and say, "Can I ask you a question?" There's an ogre uh, priest that you approach and you ask him that. He goes, "Oh, I get it. I'm an ogre, so I can't speak proper common. It's I. You want." to ask a question because I'm an ogre and of course ogres only understand axes and pillaging right I I think you're reading way too much into this I was just trying to be mm-hmm. silly I see. Mm. Yeah, the dwarves dwarves use axes a lot so too so he could be I, ripping on himself which I'm sure he was it just struck me as ra- racial appropriation well, is all I'm saying you have a sin- I sincerely apologize. I, I do okay, not mean to well, offend. Um, go, go with Heimdall Idris Elba and be blessed. We are doing some research um, and we're looking for a way to perhaps destroy a very evil creature, um, an evil demon queen. And But in order to do so, we would need a true name. And we're wondering if there is a book perhaps that you have in your archives that may have such a thing in it. We're requesting if we could do some research. Well, you, you know that true names are hard to come by, right? It's... Aye. 
but we thought that if they were a place that might have some, then perhaps you might have them hidden away, you know, and recorded something like that here. That's true. Well, we do. We have we have some literature that might be of interest, but that's that's not really for common access. There's there's a lot you can do with a being's true names, um, but you are with the only surviving member of royalty that I'm aware of. So I. That's right. We are the only surviving member. The one and only. Yep. He just looks blankly at you, Pooh. Like, as I was saying, um, I could take you into the section of forbidden knowledge, I suppose. But I can't allow you to take anything out of the library, though. Okay. Okay. So he takes you down a corridor and through several uh, steps. And he brings you into a small library, uh, not very big, um, definitely not as big as the uh, forbidden section in uh, Beatles and James. Okay. I would like to search for the true names for two beings. One of them goes by the name of Lolf. And the other one goes by the name of Carrick. Uh, make a investigation check, please. That's a 14. A 14. Can Pooh thumb through some books? Oh. Can I Can I help him? You guys help him. I'll say you get advantage. So go ahead and roll a second time. Okay. Uh, that's a dirty 20 the second time. Okay. Uh, I can tell you that you aren't able to find anything for Carrick. Of course not. Um, that, but I had to give it a shot. If you gave me a spell scroll like you just did. <laughs> I will say that uh, with a dirty 20, I will give you some other information as well. Although uh, this is more for the listener's sake. Okay. Um. And, 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 you, and you can begin to see as this is inside a church that's devoted to a deity, why this information would be forbidden. Um, mm -hmm. But in looking for the, the names of what are considered as what is considered as a lesser deity, you find a passage that explains that it's a little known truth that all the deities within the what, what the commonly known pantheon are not, in fact, gods but they are just aspects that are assuming the place of a God, uh, natural aspects rather that are assuming the place of a God. Okay. You find a, when you start searching for information on Lolf, you don't find anything specific as a true name, but you find a list of five names. Okay. Did you find anything? I did. I found a list that says on Dancer, on Prancer, on Donner, on Vixen. Do Can I cross-reference any of those names? Or do I just find the one passage and that's it? That's the one passage that you find. Okay. Like I said, there's, there's not a lot of literature on true names yeah uh, because they are so he they are so jealously guarded mm -hmm. yeah and any other place that might have something like this has been destroyed so cool well there's another place that you seem to refuse to go to yeah downtown where all the lights are bright another place that I refuse to go y to yes the drow city drow town oh I just don't know that I'm going to be very well received there me neither. Oh, you're worried you're going to be bad received there. Well, yeah, I'm guilty by association now. Thank you. Right. Well, so we've got what we've needed. Let's head back uh, to the others. Uh, let's get these uh, our, 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 our cargo to safety. Once, as soon as we leave the cathedral, Stumblefoot's going to get out a pen and some paper and write those names down real quick. Okay. 
and then fold them up and put them in his bag. Okay. Uh, I will. I will say. Uh, make a perception check real quick for me. Active perception checks a twenty four. All right. Uh, you notice observant baby. Uh, hey, uh, you notice that when uh, you put that piece of paper in your pocket with those names on it. Mm-hmm. It's slight, but you notice that when you put it in your pocket, it's heavier than a piece of paper should be. Interesting. Okay. So are you guys going back to Tom Bulgs or which location are you going to? Tom, Tom Bulgs. Bulgs. As you go in there, uh, nobody's really there except for the four of you. Even Tom Bulgs not there. So, Well, I guess we'll uh, just wait here for the others. Pooh, I'm going to work on Ashlyn, um, see if I can heal her some more, and maybe try and get some um, nourishment into her. Maybe you and Wilder or you and Orbog should run to Emrin's real quick and see if she's there. But watch out. Keep an eye peeled for her dad. He's not friendly. Oh, I've met him. He doesn't like me. Um, well, yeah, I, 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 I can uh, head out that direction. Is but that- you're, you're saying Emrin, Nickus, and it was it Rhoda? Are, none of them are there? No, they're not there. That's weird. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll run over to their, their house real quick. Anyone else can come along with me or bug. I am going to send a message to Tom Bolg real quick. Tom Bolg. Back at your house. Noticed people are gone. Have Ashlyn. Need your advice. When will you be back? You get a response that says, Drow fled village, took my stuff. I don't know. Mm. Well, <laughs> that's inconvenient. Seems that uh, Tom Bolg went chasing after the drow because they stole his stuff. Well, if I see him, I'll let you know. Okay. I'm off. Yeah. I'm going to uh, burn some spell slots on healing um, Ashlyn. Okay. And then, you know, I'll try and feed her. Make some soup or something. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Poo. Yep. You are marching off to uh, M's house. Mm -hmm. I was thinking he should probably take Wilder. Yeah, Wilder can come. Just because Wilder might want to check on his daughter or whatever. Yeah, I will say that Wilder probably, as soon as you guys got back to uh, Tom Bulk's house, Wilder probably went to go check on his on his daughter, so he probably bowed out. Yep. You get to Emran's house, and at that right at about that time, Emran's dad is stepping outside, and he sees you. Oh, well, hello there, sir. It's you again. Uh, just passing by. Just so happened to be passing by. Look, I think we got up on the wrong foot. Uh, well, why don't, yes, why don't we did? Why don't you come? With me? Okay. As I, I I start I start to go with him, and then I, uh, I'll do just an insight check, just to see if he's being sincere. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead and roll your insight check. Yes. Inside my middle name. <laughs> I feel like that's a lie. He he feels he feels sincere. Um, it doesn't feel like he's trying to deceive you in anything. Um, he it does seem like he feels like where he's taking you is important to him. Checks out. Have you ever thought about the state of your immortal being? I'm sorry. I I I, I don't believe I got your name. Uh, uh, it's uh, a poo. Who have you ever have you ever thought of have you ever thought about uh, your eternal being? Well, um, uh, before I answer that question, have you seen Emrin around lately? We'll, we'll we'll get to Emrin, but uh, keep All keep right. following with me. My eternal being. Well, uh, yeah, every now and then I I do think about that. Um, you see, I uh. I didn't think about it once. 
and I've, I've lost several people mm -hmm. close to me recently. And uh, that's caused me to uh, think more about that sort of thing. What if I told you that in spite of the losses you have in life, you can be made complete? Well, now, I, I would say that uh, that losses uh, have led to uh, me growing as a person. Um, so, that I, I guess that makes sense. What if, uh, what if the pain of those losses could be just plucked out of your being? Wouldn't, wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be something? Oh, that would be something, all right. Uh, uh, but probably not something I'd be very interested in. You see, um, even though I, I don't like the pain or the loss uh, yeah, there's a sort of uh, uh, um, oh what's the word for it there's good that that has come out of it and, uh, well, I'm not saying I'm not saying to reverse the loss I'm saying being at peace with the loss oh well uh, there, there there you would um I'm, I, I would feel that I'm more or less or at peace with with the loss. These things have happened. Son, I see I see a lot of turmoil within you. Oh, well, yes, there is a lot of turmoil. Um, but I, I feel I feel a spirit of despair uh, dis upon you that weighs that weighs heavily. Despair, you say? No, I'm, I'm, I'm doing, I'm doing just fine, just fine and dandy. I've, I, uh, maybe that, it's the. That doesn't feel right. Uh, now, sir, oh, we we haven't known each other very, very long. Um, I, uh, perhaps you have the wrong uh, impression of me. Hmm. There is a deep sense of loss that I feel coming off of you, son. I, I, yes, I, I have lost. I, I've lost some good friends. I've got back some good friends. I've. As you are, as you are mm -hmm. walking, Pooh, um, you you start to feel a bit more at home as you pass. From over a bridge and you're starting to go into a forest and you given your history with your tribe you feel very at home within a forest and this forest in particular is, start, is starting to feel very welcoming the farther in you go this is a, a, a very lovely forest that uh, I haven't seen a forest quite like this for, for a little while you know I've I've missed mm -hmm. uh, places like this. I know. There is so much peace to be found in a forest. One might even say that, uh, you know, you can find out who you really are in the woods. Find out who, who you really are in the woods? Yes, well, I, I do. Mm. You know, often I do like to take time to um, reflect. That's been something that I have been working on lately. I do a little a meditation, a little a thought, a little little prayer, even. And it uh, it does help. That makes sense. Well, tell you what, and you start to come, you start to kind of, he, he starts walking you across a, a very shallow river that only comes up to mm -hmm. about your knees. He's like, let me, let me show you a friend of mine. As you begin to approach a tree with an odd looking it looks like a dead tree that has a very odd-looking trunk to it. Very broad base with a series of strangely placed knot holes. Well, that is a, that's a very... Uh, that's, a, that's a tree and a half right there. It is. I wouldn't happen to have any, have any honey by it. He rolls his finger uh, fingers across the bark of the tree, and you see... A very beautiful looking small humanoid creature come out, except 
she has uh, kind of like white butterfly wings with a with a, a kind of blue center. Oh, uh, and she's got she has very big blue eyes, and she look ha, gets this look on her on her face, and she goes, "Oh, did you find me somebody new? Uh, somebody who needs healing?" Ooh. He goes, yes, I did. It's very good of you to notice, Anna. She flutters up to you, Pooh, and she's only about a foot and a half tall as she flutters up to you. She goes, I do see loss. A friend closer than a brother. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Christopher. He, he was a, f- a friend. Oh. And a, and a brother, you might say. And she she runs her hand past your face and she goes, let me help you. And she begins to sing to you as as she sings. It's almost a doleful lament for Christopher, as if she's putting to words this burden that you've been carrying for Christopher since he was taken so many years ago. And you don't forget about it but you're overwhelmed with a sense of peace and well-being. And it's, it, it, and it's, it, it, it's almost the first time you have felt good in spite of the situation since he was taken. And as, as she finishes singing, she goes, there, now isn't that better? Well, I, I, would, I would say yes, yes, that, that does feel better. That's nice. Well... Keep coming back and we will continue to heal the burdens of the past so that you can best surrender your burdens to Shar and be made whole. Oh yes, Shar. <laughs> well, I uh, think I should be headed off now. Thank you for the lovely song. Very good, Pooh of the House of Sanders. We look forward to seeing you again. Shar's blessing upon you. And, uh, and on you as well. And on you as well. I walk across the bridge um, and head back. Is, is Imran's father coming at all? No, he stayed in the woods. Uh, I head back, I guess, towards where he is. Ah, oh, there, there you are, sir. That lady was very nice. Anna, yes, she's very nice. She was... Uh, something, that's that's for sure. Well, you said you might know where Imran was. Oh, uh, she came by earlier, dropped off her brother and sister, and then I believe she said she was headed to discuss some matters with Ethan. I'm not entirely certain. Oh, all oh, right, good. Um, well, I should uh, be on my way. Mm. It was a uh, uh, th- thank you for uh, for bringing bringing me here. You're very welcome. And he holds he shakes your hands and looks you in the eye intently as he says, "You're very welcome, son." Uh, oh 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 yeah, son. That's uh, uh, that's a weird weird thing to say, but you're very welcome, uh, Imran's father. Yes, who leaves the woods, and he gets. He, he'll go um, out. Leaves the woods walking very swiftly. I don't want it. Uh, <laughs> about as where where he can go. I don't know. A little ways away. Finds a place okay. where he can he can sit down and he's he, he sits down and that was oh that was very very strange. I uh, I don't I don't think I should have done that. Uh, but, I mean, I feel I feel better, but uh, Cha I, I, I take a moment to uh, center myself there Okay um, And I'll go ahead and use stillness Stillness of mind Which will um, End any uh, charm Or anything that I might have Okay Think about All of that Okay. Um, do I notice any, I don't know, uh, like anything lifted from having stillness of mind? 
you seem a little bit less enamored with the song that was sung. Okay. Uh, you do feel the burden of the burden has been is still lifted from you. Mm-hmm. But in the same sense, there's a kind of a hollow feeling in its place. Yes, there is something not quite right about that place. Oh, I need to do some thinking. Some serious thinking. I think that's where we're going to call it for tonight. Thanks for hanging out with us on this episode. Uh, It was a weird one, but we had a good time. Uh, I hope you guys had a good time. Uh, Please like, rate, and subscribe to this podcast wherever you are listening to it. It helps put us in front of like-minded individuals who might enjoy listening to us as well. Uh, Recommend us to a friend. That word of mouth is always the best form of advertising and it's cheap as free to do if you want to help us out. So uh, that being said, on the behalf of JS, Josiah and Eric, thanks for listening and stay fresh, cheese bags. You have been listening to the Playing Games with Strangers podcast with the voices of John Haryu. Catherine Serwinski, Dave Clements, J.S. Earls, Celeste Mora, Josiah Crandall, Eric Campagno, and Steve MacDonald. The theme music was written and performed by Steve Arthur. News with permission. Find more of his music on Facebook or wherever you purchase music digitally. Please review this podcast wherever you download it from to help other podcasters find our podcast and join our community. And once again, thank you for listening. A massive thanks to our Blade Level patrons, Julie Earls, Aaron Peckham, Amanda Clements, Branson Boykin, Matthew Cosby, and Debbie Roth. Learn more and see how you can support the show by going to patreon.com slash playing games with strangers. 